Loving and gracious God, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. During a marriage ceremony in the church, we pray, quote, grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. I've had more than a handful of seasoned married couples come up to me after a wedding ceremony to say how moving they found the ceremony for themselves. Surprised they are. They say, thanks for reminding us what this whole marriage thing is about. Marriage ceremonies are not just for the two who are getting married. Likewise, at funerals, the living who have gathered to grieve find something in their own lives affirmed in the words of the liturgy, assurance of everlasting life, of God's presence with us as, quote, a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Turns out, funerals aren't really just for the departed. Yesterday morning, I attended an ordination to the priesthood. I listened, my heart swelling, my throat tightening, and my eyes filling as the bishop prayed, quote, you are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. Ordinations are not just for those who are being ordained. There is nothing like having your deepest calling affirmed, feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit gathered in community with others who share your calling to put a little spring back in your step, hope in your heart, and joy in your spirit as yesterday's did with me. Ordinations are not just for the one being ordained. And neither are baptisms. The families of the two babies we were to baptize this morning decided wisely to postpone the baptisms until their friends and family could gather with us safely to celebrate. And so, instead, on this feast of the baptism of Jesus, we will celebrate the renewal of our own baptismal vows. Of course, we renew our baptismal vows every time we celebrate a baptism. Each time we answer together the invitation to, quote, join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. But this morning, there is no baptismal candidate upon whom to cast our hopes and our expectations. There is no one else we are talking about who will promise to continue in the apostles' teaching, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. No one but us. No one but us who will promise to persevere in resisting evil, in proclaiming by word and example the good news of God in Christ, in seeking and serving all persons 
in Christ, in loving our neighbor as ourselves, in striving for justice and peace among all people, and in respecting the dignity of every human being. No one this morning but us. There is no cute baby today to distract us from the fact that these vows are our vows. Well, no cute baby being baptized. <laughs> <laughs> Taken by us or on our behalf for the first time some time ago, for some of us many years ago, they are no less true, they are no less critical, no less the essence of who God calls us to be in this moment, right now, today. In Luke's version of Jesus' baptism that we heard this morning, Jesus sees the clouds part and hears God's voice remind him of who he had always been up to that moment and who he will always be from that moment on. You are my child, God says, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Friends, this was not new information to Jesus. It was an echo through time of the lessons he had been taught from the Torah, as in today's reading from Isaiah. You are precious in my sight, the God of love speaks through Isaiah. You are honored, and I love you. Brought to the edge of the River Jordan with thousands of others seeking renewal in their lives, longing to be more of who they knew themselves to be in God, Jesus gets in. Jesus immerses himself. In doing so, Jesus is reminded of who he has always been, precious in God's sight, honored, loved. And he is reminded of who he will always be, God's child, beloved, pleasing to God. In his sermon at the ordination yesterday, the Bishop of Maine, Bishop Thomas Brown, told a story of a young man just before his ordination who was on retreat. The mother superior of the community where he was on retreat sat down next to him in the chapel and she said, now tell me, how long have you been preparing for ordination? The young man spoke about his years at Harvard, his connection to the monastery on Memorial Drive, and his time at General Seminary in New York, and then said, about six years, to which the Mother Superior said, oh, that is a very long time, isn't it? Imagine how long it's been for God. Because God has been preparing for this moment since the beginning of time, waiting until just now for you to say yes. The Mother Superior's question to the young man preparing for ordination, I think it's a good one for us to consider this morning as we prepare to renew our baptisms. Imagine how long it's been for God, waiting until just now for you to say yes again. Imagine how long God has waited for you to say yes. To say yes, you are precious in God's sight. Yes, you are honored. Yes, you are loved. To say yes, you are a child of God. Yes, you are the beloved. Yes, in you, in you, God is pleased. Imagine how long God has waited for you to say yes. Yes, because we are precious and honored by God, we will continue in the apostles' teaching in fellowship 
in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. Yes, because we are beloved, we will pers persevere in resisting evil. Yes, we will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. Yes, God, because we are your beloved children, we will seek and serve Christ in all persons. We will love our neighbors as ourselves, and we will strive for justice and peace among all people. Yes, God, because we are your beloved, we will respect the dignity of every human being. My friends, baptisms aren't just for the ones being baptized. It seems like just last week Jesus was 12 years old. <laughs> and yet already about the work of God. Today, he is about 30 when he steps into the River Jordan. Imagine how long God was waiting for him to say yes. Maybe today is the day God prays. Maybe today. Jesus spent at least 18 years, if not 30, preparing to say yes. Then when he does say yes and gets in the river, he sees the skies open, the Spirit descend, and knows again his belovedness by God in his bones. Now Jesus waits for us at the edge of the river, wondering if we will join him, wondering when we will join him. Maybe today is the day, he prays. Maybe today. How long have you been preparing to live this day as a beloved child of God? Well, imagine how long it has been for God. Because God has been preparing for this moment since the beginning of time, waiting until just now for you to say yes. Amen.